Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Today we're back with another weekly recap. Now this week's is Old School RuneScape's 7th anniversary so there is a brand new quest uh, released into the game. However with it there have been a few minor changes to recent updates including Zulcano as well as the proposed death mechanics have seen a change. Uh, so we're going to be going over that. As always I'm going to be going over any community news related to the Old School RuneScape community this week as well as the weekly Q&A. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and let's get started. Okay, first up here, let's have a look at today's game update, and it is called Old School RuneScape's 7th Birthday, and I can't believe it's already been 7 years. That is crazy, a big congratulations to making it to 7 years, that's already kind of long for a game, and Old School RuneScape is of course a reboot, which is even more impressive. Okay, so every year there is a birthday event, and this year is no different. So it has been 7 years since we dug out our Dragon Med Helms and returned to the nostalgic world of Old School RuneScape. You know what that means, it's time to celebrate. The Romeo and Juliet quest first came out in 2001, and Juliet spent all her time since moping around the house. So you can go ahead and talk to her to start the birthday event, it's only about a 4 minute quest. You do get cat ears, which... God, I don't know about that one. A little cringy, but you know what? You get access to all the previous rewards as well. So also in today's update, they've now released to a few people the new Gatherer Path, which is part of the Adventure Path system. So there will be a few lucky players to test out the Gatherer Path, which introduces fishing, woodcutting, and the mining skill, which will guide players to level 5 in each skill. Now, most people will not be using this content, but I think it's very important for new players because this game has a lot to it and honestly just imagine knowing nothing it would be pretty overwhelming to try to get into this game so i think the adventurer path is a really good idea it would be kind of nice if it tied into a easy diary or something like that because it's very close to how the diary system works so there is a bit of info on game blast and some new merch but as far as game updates there's a few important ones in the kind of other news section now the most important one here is there was a change to the Zulcano drop table again. Now it was originally nerfed last week, but they've made a few alterations. First up here, the chance of landing on the Crystal Tool Seed table is now 1 out of 200, with a 1 out of 8,000 chance of getting an uncut onyx. And the Zulcano shard has been removed from this table and will now be rolled as a tertiary drop. So that way if you hit the rare drop table, you won't be very disappointed by getting a Zulcano shard. It would be a separate roll, so you could theoretically get them both at the same time. Also, the amount of mithril gold and silver ore received as drops has also been reduced. Uh, that was something that a lot of people were asking for because the way that mithril ore is connected to the Tazar ore shop and thus connected to onyxes made it so that mithril ore was actually devaluing onyxes and chaos runes more so than other items. So they took the community feedback on that one. So hopefully that will make a substantial change. And that is pretty much it for today's game update. Now, they made quite a few changes to the Death Mechanics blog, and they kind of sneakily just put a change log at the top. However, they do mention it in this week's Q&A as well, but I'm just going to go over the changes because there's a few new features they are considering, uh, including with the Death Mechanic rework. Okay, so one really big change that they ended up making is the fees for permanent item reclaiming chests, including Torfin, uh, the Theater of Blood, the Volcanic Mind, and other situations, will be left unchanged, which means they're going to remain the way they are now, so there will be the existing fee on it to reclaim it, and that will not be going up in price. The only exception is Zora, which will be given a fee to non-Ultimate Ironman accounts, with a kill count over 50. So for Ultimate Ironman, there is no change to the way death mechanics work. However, if you are an Ironman account or a main account, and you have over 50 kills, there would actually be a fee where previously there wasn't one. This is to be less punishing on players just learning the boss. Also, you'd have 50 kills, not 50 deaths, which means you could die as many times as you want while learning it, and you still won't get a fee until you've killed it 50 times. And the big other proposal is a new mechanic, which would be called the Death's Coffer. Ironman players express concern over how they actually get the cash to pay for their fees, uh, so they're proposing the Death's Coffer. Uh, so they'd like to propose, as part of the Death's Office, a means of sacrificing unwanted items to pay for these fees, which would also be opened up to non-Ironman accounts. Uh, this would also act as an item sink, and it would be called the Death's Coffer. Essentially, the way it would work is unwanted items could be sacrificed to Death, who would put 105% of the GE value into a coffer for you. I'm not really sure why it's 105% and not just 100%. I'm sure there is a reasoning there, because that seems way too random otherwise. 
The coffer could be used to pay for gravestone fees and other item retrieval services, but you'd never be able to withdraw the money from the coffer, so there's no way you'd be able to kind of, I don't know, merch death, essentially. Any player would be entitled to use the death's coffer to pay down fees for their item retrieval services, though it may be of particular use to Ironman players who cannot convert their unwanted items into cash so easily. As we would prefer the item sync effect not to be used on cheap junk nor untradeable stuff, death would only accept tradable items with a GE value of 10,000 coins or more. I guess the idea is that the death's coffer would never be the ideal circumstance anyway, because ideally you get back to your items in time. There would be no circumstance where you would prefer to just let your items go to the death office and then get a higher exchange rate with the 105%, but yet I still think it should be 100%, not really sure why. So that was a major change on the 14th of February. On the 19th, there's been a few other changes, which was yesterday. Fire cape, Vernet Defender, etc. will now go to your gravestone without breaking, and the fee for retrieving them would be considerably less than the repair cost. Also, Ironman players remain concerned about high fees. Uh, we're proposing a 50% fee reduction for gravestones and death office for standard and hardcore Ironman players. Now, because this is so confusing, I'm thinking of doing a full video just on the death mechanics because there's just so much to it. It's changing pretty frequently. I think it's kind of confusing. Would you guys be interested in a video like that or would you just prefer to read it yourself? Let me know. Okay, so that's pretty much it for game updates. Now, moving on to community news, one of the biggest pieces of information released this week is the Nightmare drop rates. Now it's a bit controversial because some people think they should have waited longer to release the drop rates, some people think they should never be released, some people think they should be released on day one. But anyway, they are released and the Nightmare items actually have started crashing in value. Now the reason being is the perceived drop rates for these items were a lot rarer than they actually turned out to be. Now it's still a little unclear about exactly how the scaling aspect of the Nightmare works with the drop rates, but essentially the Nightmare staff is a separate role. It scales from one of the 750 to one of the 600, which means that doing it in giant masses is definitely not the way to go. If I'm interpreting that correctly, one of the 600 being the best odds you have of getting it regardless of your team size, then yes, doing it in a smaller group is going to be the best. The main uniques scale from one of the 250 to one of the 200 to roll this table. If you hit the table, it's a 3 out of the 24 chance of getting the maze, 5 out of the 24 chance of getting the great helm, 2 out of 24 chance of getting either a harmonized eldritch or volatile orb. And then there is the tertiary drop table, which, which scales from one of the 6,000 to one of the 3,000 for the pet, uh, scales from one of the 3,000 to one of the 1,500 for the jar of dreams. So essentially, what that means is the nightmare drops are a bit more common than most people think, and doing it in small team sizes is probably the most efficient way to go. Okay, so this week there was an interview with Mod Ash by Mod Shani. Haven't watched it yet, just making you aware of it. Should be probably a good time. So one thing a lot of people have been noticing is the OS Buddy pricing graph has been seeing a lot of manipulation recently. Now there was a post on Reddit about this and apparently the OS Buddy uh, owner is actually investigating it and is saying the main cause is due to actually a bug in the way that Jagex stock markets work. It allows users to sell items to themselves if certain conditions are met and apparently they're writing up a patch to it to, to filter out those prices. Now, I think I've been aware of this bug for a long time, and so is Jagex. It is possible to kind of sell yourself items even though you've hit the limit, I think. It's kind of a weird interaction. Hopefully that will get fixed. Okay, next up here, the OSR's wiki has added a bunch of new calculators to the website. I'm always excited to try the new calculator, and the wiki team is always doing very good work, so I'll go ahead and check it out. And finally here, a player by the name of Coxie has achieved all of the pets in game, which now is, I believe, the first person to do that because of the addition of the Nightmare Pet. And that is pretty much it for community news. And last up here, I'm gonna do a quick recap of this week's Q&A. Now, the Q&A was longer than normal, but a lot of it was them talking about death mechanics and new updates. Uh, so there weren't actually as many questions as there normally is, but there are still some questions. First up, does this mean it's safe to die at Skatizo? Skatizo is an instance, so yes, with the new death mechanic changes, you would be safe there. Could the level up menu be reopened? Uh, if they were to do that, they would rather add a flashing skill icon similar to that of RS3. Unfortunately, it would require a complete overhaul to the level up system and the skill guide. Do you guys think that you revealed the nightmare drop raids too soon? Some of the mods do think it was a bit too soon. They did do a straw poll. 35% of the people think it should be released one to three months after. 20% uh, said zero to two weeks, and 20% said two weeks to a month. Is it possible to get more wall kits for the POH? 
You can't unmake regular gloves, so why should you be able to unmake ferocious gloves? Would you consider making that change? They said they're not really opposed to doing it, but that mechanic has been in the game for a long time. They kind of generally do it on a case-by-case -case basis, not necessarily for thematic purposes. Is it possible to organize the quests by difficulty? Unfortunately, there is no metadata for quests, but the wiki has a lot more data points that you can sort through. I think a Crystal Elven POH theme would look very good. Can we get more POH themes? They said maybe from a future league, unfortunately POH themes require a lot of new assets and they cost a lot of money. It would be really cool to have blueprints dropped by monsters, but unfortunately it would have to be some major content because of the upfront cost. And finally, could vials of blood be obtained from other sources? They had no plans to add other sources, but with the new Mauritania content, uh, they may consider it. Anyway guys, that is going to be it for today's weekly update. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, I would appreciate it. If you left the video a like, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.